Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about what's the best entity for my small business slash side hustle. Even if you aren't an online reseller, as you can see by all those icons over there, that um, this video has been geared to the reseller community. However, if you have a small business or side hustle and you really don't know how to organize or how to structure your business, this is a great video. Stay tuned. And uh, you're going to get to understand the difference between a sole proprietorship and a LLC. If you don't already know, I've been selling on eBay since 2005, and I am a degreed accountant, so I understand all of this muckety-muck mess that most entrepreneurs don't even want to touch with a 10-foot pole. But I'm going to teach it to you tonight, and after we're done, I think you're going to have a little bit better understanding about how to organize your business. So we're going to talk about only two different types of business structures. The audience that I have prepared this video for is somebody who has just started a side hustle or somebody whose side hustle is starting to grow into a bigger business. Maybe they're starting to work their side hustle full time. Maybe they're getting ready for their spouse to quit their job and to join them in this endeavor. For simplicity, all you really need to know is that a sole proprietorship is based on your social security number. An LLC is identified by the EIN number or better known as an employer identification number. This is obtained through the IRS. You can do it yourself. Um, you can go to the irs.gov website and apply for it there. So let's dig a little deeper and let's see which one is better suited for where you are right now in your small business. So the first one we're going to talk about today is a sole proprietorship. All right, so what's the pro of being a sole proprietorship? Probably one of the easiest things is at the end of the year, it is pretty simple to file your tax return. It's just an additional schedule and it's a Schedule C. This is where you're going to tell the IRS how much cash you received in your business and then all the business expenses and all your, your write-off. So you don't have to spend any money forming an LLC. Um, the only thing you might need to do is go to your corporation commission and um, reserve your name. Um, that way it's your name and nobody else can take it later on down the road when maybe you decide you want to form an LLC. Um, if you do have any employees, even though I said a sole, a sole proprietorship is recognized by your social security number, you are the business, the business is you. But if you have employees, you will have to get an EIN for payroll tax reporting purposes. And why is that? Is that is because you have to collect payroll taxes from your employees. You deduct, you deduct them from their paychecks, as well as you um, have to pay in the employer portion of the tax. So I'm going to stop for a second. And I'm going to say that if you have employees, you need to do not pass go. Go directly to form an LLC. And you're going to understand why here in a bit and when we talk about LLCs. And actually, it's a con of a, a sole proprietorship because you're at a higher risk because the owner is responsible for company debt and liability. And when I mean liability, I'm not talking about you owe a bill. I'm talking about what if you have employees? What if an employee runs over somebody's prize winning big and they want to sue you for $5,000 and you don't have $5,000 in your business account, well, they can come after you personally. So if you're just starting out, you it's a side hustle. Don't go out and spend a lot of money forming a business. But once you know you're going to go to that next level, go out there, spend the money and form an LLC and protect yourself. <music> So you can't pay yourself a paycheck. So you are going to take draws from the, your company in untaxed distribution. So what does that mean? That means the money that you take out of the business to pay your personal bills has not been taxed. 
And so you're going to have to pay, if you look down at the next line, you're going to have to pay self-employment quarterly taxes. So let's go on and let's talk about LLCs. So the first one we're going to talk about is a single member LLC. And, and not just a single member LLC, but it's a one that has not elected S Corp tax status. And we're going to talk about that. And in a couple more slides, we're going to talk about what that means. But basically, an LLC can just be a single member LLC, which is really basically sole proprietorship. You file your taxes the same, you have to make self employment taxes, but you are at a lower risk of exposure, which is awesome. And your company is identified with that EIN and not your social security number. So it's a little bit more legitimate with that LLC at the end of it. And, you, and it serves with a little bit more protection. It's still a pass-through entity. So you are still responsible for paying your self-employment tax and your income tax on the profit uh, that the company makes. So, but hey, Susan, but if me and Aunt Betsy, me and Aunt Betsy, we want to start our own company. What do we do? All right. So sole proprietorship doesn't work for you, does it? So you're going to do an LLC, a multi-member LLC. And when you start out, you can just start out and you don't have to elect S Corp tax status. It makes it a little bit more confusing down the road. So we're going to make it simple. And the only difference between a multi-member LLC and a single member LLC is that the IRS recognizes you as a partnership. So at the end of the year, you as a company have to file a 1065 and tell the IRS how much money the company made and you need to distribute those profits to each of its members. So if you have two members, you and Aunt Betsy, and you each own half, then you each have to pay taxes on 50% of the profit that the company made. You'll receive a K-1. And that K-1 is like much like a W-2. And that is what you'll give to your tax preparer to file your taxes at the end of the year. Still need to make quarterly self-employment tax payments because you can't, you cannot um, write yourself a paycheck. So you would take distributions from the company as you would in, in a single member LLC. All right. So what is all this hullabaloo about electing S Corp tax status? What does that mean? I know you've been waiting for this, haven't you? Okay, well, here it is. Let's go. You have to take reasonable compensation from your business. So you're going to write a paycheck, which is amazing. I love it. The money you get has been taxed. You've had taxes um, deducted from the paycheck. The employer's portion has been uh, paid for by the business. And then... The money that is left over in the company after all of that has been said and done, because those wages are just basically a business expense at the end of the year. At the end of the year, what's left can be distributed to the members of the organization in the form of dividends. And so that is not subject to the um, whole self-employment taxing, which is a savings of 15%. Now you still have to pay federal income tax on this, but hey, that's way better, way better than paying that 15%. So that's kind of the gist of it. And that's why people do it. Now it's way more complicated than that. And a CPA could drone on this forever. But again, it's a little bit more complicated because you got to set up payroll. You got to pay yourself a paycheck. And so there is more paperwork, more administrative work. So that's why I tell people, you know what? Start slow. So let's go over all of that. Everything that I've talked about in this video. So let's recap. So remember this, sole proprietorship. This is a great way to get started. That side hustle going on. 
you know what? You don't want to spend a whole lot of money. You want to make sure this business is going to stick and it's going to blow up into something awesome and amazing. And maybe it will always stay a side hustle, something you do one weekend a month or something like that. So really, what's the bother of forming in the LLC? <music> And then the second one that we want to talk about is a single member LLC and a multi-member LLC, right? And so this is going to help protect your personal assets. So the third step and the final step that you would want to take in this journey would be to elect subcorp election for your tax status. And that's, again, you know, you got to got paychecks, got to do payroll. And then after that, whatever's left in the business after that, then you are not taxed that self-employment tax. You're pay you are taxed based on your federal income tax rate. <music> payroll service is going to file all your, your payroll tax reports. They're going to make your deposits for you. You're not going to have to worry. <music> And remember, those self-employment taxes, if I didn't talk about this earlier, self-employment taxes are made up of 15% plus your federal income tax, okay? Okay, well, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else. Are you asleep? Hey, wake up, wake up. Okay, well, that's it. So I hope you all have a groovy day and you've enjoyed watching this video. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. We're going to have so much amazing content in 2023. So you don't want to forget about me. I'm going to have great ideas for you and lots of ways to organize your business. Well, that's it for now. Have a groovy day.